Everyone keeps asking me what software to find radio would make a good spectrum analyzer. Well today, I'll be showing you the Pluto SDR along with the Satsigen software, and I think you're going to be pretty happy with it. My name is Sarah, and you're watching Signals Everywhere. Today on Signals Everywhere, we'll be using a Pluto SDR, a few 10 dB attenuators, as well as a couple random accessories and an RF bridge to do everything from measure an antenna to measuring a filter. Before we get started, you're going to want to connect both of these 10 dB attenuators to the receive and transmit ports of your Pluto SDR. This is primarily to ensure that we have proper matching between the two ports. Now before we can make proper use of this particular application, we'll need to right click on the power button and head up to our settings so that we can inform this application that we are using two 10 dB attenuators on both ports. Head over to the level correction tab and in the offset levels for attenuation we will enter negative 10 for both of these levels. Once you are sure that these settings are correct go ahead and press the OK button and if your Pluto SDR is connected and the driver is properly installed see a link in the description if you need help with driver installation go ahead and press the power button to start the software up. So now we have our full-blown spectrum analyzer as well as the tracking generator and tons of other features, not all of which we'll be getting into on this particular video. Now you'll see that currently this application is showing that the calibration requirement is fulfilled. We have a green light here, but you'll notice as soon as we begin to tune around, we lose that calibration and it does require uh, calibration once again. Now the first thing I'd like to do is measure the RTL-SDR's FM filter which is supposed to be a band stop rejection filter from 88 to 108 megahertz. So in this example, I'm gonna go from 71 to about 130 megahertz. We're going to leave our receive gain at 30, transmit power at negative 20, and our resolution at 512. We also want to ensure that we have a somewhat short cable connected to both ports, preferably in between our 10 dB attenuators. And from here, we can calibrate the software with our Pluto SDR. Go ahead and press the Calibrate Requirement button, and then once our range is set for the device we will be testing, go ahead and enable the Spectrum Analyzer with the Tracking Generator. So you'll see that this is going to have the Pluto SDR begin sweeping this particular range, and it's going to give us a nice baseline for when we um, remove the cable and then insert our device under test, in this case our RTL-SDR FM filter. You can see that our calibration requirement is now set up as green, so we know that we are properly calibrated. We can turn the spectrum analyzer itself off, and from here, we're going to disconnect one end of our cable from our port on the Pluto, and we will insert instead the RTL SDR FM filter, and I have a nice little barrel connector at the end of that just to help me make all of my connections. Links to all of these parts will be in the description below if you happen to need to uh, purchase any ones that you don't happen to have on hand. Let's go ahead and start the spectrum analyzer and tracker back up. And you'll see we again get the usual sweep that we did before, except this time we are measuring the actual filter itself. So let's go ahead and just do a uh, pause on that particular output. And we want to come over here. We actually have the original listing from the RTL blog itself that gives us um, some information regarding what this filter has been tested as using a proper service monitor so we can get a general idea of how well everything is working on our end. And you can see we actually have a very similar output to the ones that you see in this graph here where we do get a nice dip here at the beginning and then it comes up just about after 88, 88, 5 megahertz and then up out of that uh, once we get a little bit closer to about 122 megahertz. And if we look at our um, description for this filter, it says that the filter rejects signals between 88 and 108 megahertz with around 80 dB or more of attenuation. And if we take a look, our lowest point here is actually 61 dBm of attenuation. And if we come up over here, we're seeing uh, roughly about 50 at 90.2 megahertz. And that continues through the entire FM broadcast uh, range. So you can see that the filter is doing a very good job as what it was advertised to do. Now we can also see that outside of the bandpass insertion loss, well below 500 megahertz is less than 0.5 dB. And they give us various other losses. Essentially they're saying that 
um, anywhere between 1 and 2 or 2 to 3 gigahertz, they should be below 1.5 dB of attenuation or insertion loss. So the idea here is that if you're using this to filter out FM noise on, say, the L-band, you can do so without interfering with that L-band reception itself, and we can test this ourselves using the Pluto SDR and the Satsigen software. Let's go ahead and turn this off, and we will adjust our stop frequency to be about 1700 megahertz, which is the upper end of the band where we have L-band and other frequencies, and it's the upper end of what the RTL is capable of. Now, if we want this to be somewhat accurate, because we've changed our frequency, we do need to calibrate again. Now, simply changing the frequency and measuring again will work just fine, but your results will be far less accurate than if you were to recalibrate in between. So I always recommend that if you're going to change the frequency or change anything major in the system, to go ahead and recalibrate just to ensure this is as accurate as possible. And let's bring the spectrum analyzer and tracker back up, and we'll be able to see all the way from the FM range up to the upper range that the RTLs are capable of receiving in. And you see we do have a couple of dips in here, but where you have L-band at roughly 1.5 gigahertz, there's only 1.14 dB of potential insertion, uh, insertion loss there. So it is exactly as advertised according to our Pluto SDR spectrum analyzer using the Satsigen software. Now let's say you wanted to do something like tune up an antenna. Now in this case, I'm just going to use one of the RTL blogs, uh, little dipole antennas or rabbit ear antennas. Um, but this would be a good example of something that you could do in order to tune up a custom antenna that you might be designing or building for your own projects. So for this, you'll need to take an RF bridge and you'll want to connect the RF in port to the uh, transmit port of the Pluto SDR, the RF output on your bridge to the receiver of your Pluto SDR, and then of course the DUT or device under test port would go to the antenna that you're currently working on. Now in this case I have the spectrum analyzer set up to go from 71 to 1000 uh, megahertz and you can see that it is currently calibrated for that range so I'm just going to turn it on and essentially what we have here is the Pluto SDR is generating a large sweeping signal. Some of that is being passed into our RF bridge. Um, essentially what we have is some of that RF energy is being uh, released into the air through our antenna and you can see here from our path that it looks like that's roughly at 280 megahertz. The rest of it is being reflected back into the receive port of the Pluto SDR and that's why you're seeing um, you know uh, a much higher noise floor up here or a higher signal that is actually RF that's being reflected back in to the Pluto SDR from our RF bridge. Now you'll see as we modify the length and size of this antenna we also change the areas where it's reflecting RF back into the Pluto SDR and so you would see that this is probably a better receiver now at 158 megahertz where before it was better off in you know the 220 range. So this is a crude example obviously this antenna is not going to tune properly with me sitting here and uh, just holding on to it we have no ground plane or any other proper stuff going on but it gives you an idea of how you could use just a Pluto SDR and a couple uh, accessories to essentially tune your own antenna without having to buy all of this expensive hardware to get things done. Uh, the Pluto is very, very affordable, and it's definitely one of my favorite transmit capable SDRs, hands down. So there is a lot more that you can do with this software. I just wanted to run down a couple uh, basic little things that you might be interested in. Um, now, of course, we also have the Spectrum Analyzer itself. So currently we have this locked on at 2.4 gigahertz, and we're looking at a span of about 4 megahertz of bandwidth. Now I can also turn on a frequency generator at that same frequency, and now you see we have a signal being generated at 2.4 um, gigahertz. And of course I can change the power output uh, and what we are actually seeing back on the receiver from here. Uh, we can also change that frequency so we can move this over. And now the nice thing here is not only can we try things like different types of modulation like AM or narrowband FM or even FSK. Um, of course, generally we would want to keep this on CW. This also means that we have the, the um, ability to do things with the spectrum analyzer such as um, excessively wide uh, spans. So we can come up here and, for example, now we're looking at 7 megahertz of bandwidth. Now that doesn't sound like a lot. Let's try 20 megahertz of bandwidth. 
and you'll actually see that we can do quite a bit. We can do 100 megahertz of bandwidth, really get a good idea of what's going on. Uh, let's go even further. Let's say we want one gigahertz worth of bandwidth, and we can see that all throughout the Pluto STR. If we turn off the generator, you'll see it's a lot quieter, and you actually see some of the local Wi-Fi chatter um, that's being received um, you know, th either through the cable or through the housing of the Pluto SDR itself, uh, as I do I have a Wi-Fi hotspot fairly close to this. Much like other applications um, like this one, you're not going to be limited to the uh, general mega sample per second rate of your SDR. You're going to be able to, because you are scanning a range and running through that frequency range, you're able to look at a much larger chunk of spectrum than you would otherwise be able to. So I can easily look at a full gigahertz of spectrum and it's really not gonna cause me any issues whatsoever. Uh, we can actually bring this down so we're looking at 900 to 1900 uh, megahertz. Um, it's really nice to have that type of flexibility in the Pluto. Um, this is very similar to stuff that you would see with, for example, the AirSpy Spectrum Analyzer software. Um, but I really feel like this in particular gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more functionality, because the Pluto SDR has that transmit port. That means you're able to do things like use the generator. You're able to do things like uh, run tracking along with your spectrum analyzer. So you're able to do things like check out filters or tune antennas. And it's just a really cool thing to be able to do. Um, so having that generator and the spectrum analyzer together is really helpful. And then I don't recall actually showing you this. I wanted to set up uh, here at 2.4 gigahertz. You can enable a waterfall. Of course, you can do this anywhere along the band and actually see the uh, SDR waterfall that you are used to uh, in other traditional software to find radio applications. So it's really nice, all the functionality that you're given. And uh, I really hope that this is helpful to somebody out there because the Pluto SDR is a $99 research tool that literally gives you everything you could want for a pretty affordable price. It does full duplex, it does transmit and receive. It is good enough to be my spectrum analyzer. Um, I'm obviously not gonna use this in a commercial setting, but to be able to use this and you know just work on my own filters, work on my own stuff, and know that it's good enough to you know inform me of whether or not that's where I want it to be um, is a big deal because spectrum analyzers are not cheap. And um, you know I think this is hopefully gonna help out a lot of people. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.